So hi, this is Brian Wilson with BFW Classroom again, and I just wanted to go through our third lesson inside of our Google Classroom Notebook. In today's lesson, I'm going to show a couple of viewing options. I'm going to add a table of contents to the front page, and then I'm going to show how you can seed stuff inside of um, different or nest different things inside of the bolted list or numbered list, but they not show up inside of your um, table of contents to the side. So first thing I'm going to do is add a table of contents. So on my front page, um, so, all right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to insert an actual table of contents. So the first thing you do is go to insert and at the bottom of insert, it'll say table of contents. It'll give you two choices. You can do one with page numbers. I don't like doing page numbers when I'm doing these kind of documents. If you're doing a normal document, you're more than welcome to do so. I like to do the ones with the links, mostly because when I show this to the students in class, it reminds them on the front page that there are links. Now, someone's going to say, why would you do this? Because it looks exactly like that. That's true. What you can do, though, is as you go through with this, you can delete parts of this. And as you update, you can click update table of contents and it will change you'll make changes inside of here now the reason why i'm showing that is because i'm going to go to the vocabulary page so one of the things that we worked on last week was the idea of taking the vocabulary page and making all the headings a page you know an actual like word that you can get to now what i don't like is that over in here they're all showing up so what I want to do is actually make it so that you can't see these pieces. So what I can do here is I can remove them from the outline by clicking the X and they're gone. Now, if you look back here, it's still a heading five. So it's still stylized that way. Now, the reason why it's important to do that is because again, you want to keep them linked so that way, inside of your actual pieces, so like up here in our cultural groups where we did this last week, you can go ahead and link words down into the vocabulary. So um, if you want to look at government, you know, we have these. If I want to link this word to electoral college, I still can, but it's not, see, it's not over here, but I can link to it here inside of the document where I click headings. Oop. I click headings and then I go down to electoral college. Won't show it in the document over here, but it will show it over here. And so I can go back and forth and find it. Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go down to vocabulary and just show you this. So each time you add a word, it'll keep doing this. If you go back up to the top where it shows table of contents, they're here. What if I don't want them there? Because then it's going to list all of these words twice. So what you can do inside the table of contents is you can actually take these as a whole and delete them. But let's say you add some more words. What do you do? If you update the table of contents, they pop back up again. What I recommend doing is, if you're going to have a vocabulary appendix, if you're going to do that, that you can do one of two things. You can either not link your words, which I could have gone over here to the outline, I'm just doing this. Not link your words using the headings, or actually do this for each word. Just make the word that way and make this line normal text. Now, that seems a bit, you know, odd. Why would you do that? Because now you're not reading them all together. And what was the point of actually, you know, having it all go in? Um, it really is just to change that front page. So now if I go back up to the front page and I click here and I update, Now you begin to just see the words, and they're not all listed on the front thing. Um, you can make some some choices here with the table of contents. 
And what I mean by that is, you know, once you have them in here, you can start removing links. You can delete it. This is the only way you can delete it is if you double click on it and do that. Um, but if you do anything else, it's just going to keep the link open. I, I mean, if you're looking to add these for printing purposes, this might be helpful. Um, you're all going to have to reformat these as you go through. I choose not to. Like having students in class, um, I try basically not to tell kids to use the table of contents in the book or in the notebook, mainly because they have this whole thing over here. Um, now, the other thing I'm going to say is, let's say I have another word, like electioneering. Um, if I make this a heading 5 here, so let's say I go ahead and make that a heading 5, a whole line, now I have it inside of the vocabulary. Again, you just have to delete it here if you want to remove it from the outline. Um, you know, I... If you keep the heading, it will keep it so that you can add it back up here inside of this whole thing. So it really is up to you. Just depends on how you want to do it. If you want all of them embedded here, you can. You don't necessarily need to. Um, one of the things I did today was this. So I'm going to go down to here. Um, as I was writing, my first set of it for the definition, I made it really long. Um, in fact, I made it this long. I don't recommend keeping all this information here in the, in the, uh, the vocab. Vocab definitions, when I think about them, should be short, concise, and to the point. So I would try and shorten them. If you're going to put this much information, I'd put it back in the notes. Now, if you want to, if you want to have this link back to somewhere else, you can make headers at another place up in there. So if, like, let's say um, you have, whoop. Huh. so let's say you want it to link back to here where you have all this information about all this stuff. Um, where this is a heading, let's say you make it like a heading four or something. Um, what you can do is back down where this actual definition is, you can put, you know, see here for more details. And then what you can do is you can link, um, you can link this back up to where you are in the notes. So now you kind of have this point where you can go back and forth and um, kind of see in your um, information what's going on so, and then click apply and now it's going to make it so that i can go back up there there you go all right this is just showing hyperlinks moving back and forth inside of the google doc very simple straightforward now the last thing I'm going to show is how to insert uh, a piece of material from somewhere else. So let's say I want to see an electoral college map. So I'm going to search the web. I'm going to click that. I'm going to come up over here. Electoral college, and there's a map. Now, here's an electoral college map. There's several that are out there. Make sure whichever one you pick actually is the one you want. I think this one is pretty good, but I'm not sure. So if you click preview image, it will pull the image into your view screen so you can see it. Now this is the Electoral College map as of 2016 with all of the Electoral College uh, elector numbers in each state. That's what I want. Okay, so I'm going to click insert. And now it's there inside of my document. Um, I can move it around, but I want to make it so that it actually is kind of set different. Um, where I put where I put it inside of the other part of the uh, nested list, 
or inside the uh, bolted list, it kind of offset it. So make sure your offsets are correct to where you want them. And since I want this thing to be about that size, that kind of works. Um, how you you know however you want to. Um, one of the tricks that I have found is that when you insert pictures into a Google Doc to make it so you can put something over to the side of it that actually goes with it, um, what I do is I insert a table first. I put two blocks. Um, I move the picture to inside of it. And then over here on this side, I just, you know, put something in there. So, um, electoral college map as of the 2016, 2020 election cycles. And just leave it that way. Now, some people might say, what if you want to do this underneath? If you wanted to do this underneath, um, you can again just do the table thing and do table and do uh, a one by two instead of a two by one. It really is up to you, whatever you want to do for your sizing. And then it just kind of keeps this text and the information together. Um, you can put information here if you wanted to. Um, what I might actually do is take this stuff and take this information and drop it down into here. And there you go. Like if I want to put that information, of course, these, this is, I'm recording this on, um, as you can see, like November the 2nd, so the day before the 2020 election, these were all things that I said, like if scenarios happen, you could have a tie um, as to what would happen and then as a result of it. All right, again, hope this all helps. Um, enjoy and uh, try it by inserting into your actual uh, Notebook documents. Good luck.